Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Ark Survival Evolved with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the ever beautiful, ever peaceful Herbivore Island. So we're back here today as opposed to the snow biome because of the recent update. Not only has the mighty creature of the deep, the, what is it now, the Mosasaur been added, but we have also also now finally being graced with animal life cycles. Yes indeed, you may now breed the animals in your care. So I'm going to have the Dodo Legion I've always wanted. Well, there's, there is a reason to be perfectly honest that we're going to be breeding the Dodos first. Because first of all, they are the most easy to breed and second of all, they require the least effort in terms of actually keeping the eggs safe. Now, of course, they are still laying the regular unfertilized eggs, as you see here and here, but that's not what we're after today. We're going to be figuring out just how to make the fertilized eggs and just how to incubate them. From what I've read, all you need to do is to allow them to breed. And to do this, you simply allow them to wander, and if they have the lovely icon above them there, the love heart, indicating that they have the mate bonus, they will seek out their mate and simply Please well, form the fertilized egg required. This will take a short period of time, the fertilized egg will be laid by the female, which you can then collect. Once the egg is collected, you may deposit it anywhere you want, in fact, just on the floor, and the incubation will start. However, a temperature is required, and you need to be very careful about this. If the egg is too warm or too cold for any extended period of time, sadly, it will, it will lose, rather, its fertilized status and go back to just being a regular egg, which is quite sad, really. So, today we're going to be making an incubation room and penning these animals off so that we can leave them wandering and just l allow them to do their business in the future. And our egg farm will finally take hold and we will have so many eggs. It will be glorious. First of all, fertilized for some baby dodos, and then there we go go, grab the other one, and then eventually moving on to things like trikes and parasaurs and all sorts of good stuff like that. Oh yes, before I forget though, the other reason why I'm choosing dodos to start off with is that the their eggs hatch a lot faster, purely because the dodo itself lays smaller eggs, and the smaller the egg, the faster the animal hatches. In general, although this does vary from animal to animal. On top of this, the levels also matter, apparently. The higher level the the parent, the longer the eggs take to hatch, and thankfully we do have some very low level dodos here and there, whereas most of my other animals are a little bit too high level for a fast hatch. So, let's begin by penning these animals off, and I will be right back. There we are, the pen is now complete. It may look a little bit ramshackle, but this is because I did have this pen over double the size just a moment ago. But it turns out that, well, you need them to be very close together for this to actually work. And it just wasn't working out. So, the lowest level female, which I believe is this level 16, you may wonder. And then the lowest level male, which is... I actually don't know. Which one's the lowest level male? Is it you? Yep, it's you, level 14. You may wander as well. Now, after a short while, they'll actually start walking around, and if they get close enough, they will begin the process of producing an egg. So let's just wait around. For oh, there we go. It's already happening. And if we go to the female, there should, and there is a mating progress bar. Of course there is. So after a brief period of time, once that bar is complete, we will have a fertilized egg, and we can see just how hard it is to actually get the thing to incubate. Once again, something I've not done yet in the game. Almost there. Hopefully the egg will be made. Now, there we go. We have a fertilized egg, which apparently has a really weird kind of red glow to it. Excellent. So egg health and egg incubation, both bars. I don't know how this really works. So it shouldn't spoil. Well, it definitely won't spoil in the time it takes to incubate. Um, the bars seem to be full by default, and I assume that they go down. However, 
How am I actually supposed to tell the temperature of the egg itself is my question. Oh yes, the incubation time is now going down. So, currently we can see the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. However, I'm not sure if that's my temperature or the temperature of the environment itself. I'm assuming it's actually my temperature, actually. So let's swap our clothes to something else of a different um, insulation level. There we go. These will have more hyperthermal insulation. So there we go. There we are. Change these around. Actually, no, they don't because they all have different quality levels. So regardless, it'll change, and that's the important thing. Do I not have leather gloves? That's fine. Nope, still 24, so perhaps that is the environment's temperature itself, and that will make it a lot easier to actually ensure they're in a decent temperature. I was really thinking that perhaps the temperature would be found actually on the egg itself, so it would be a lot easier to figure out, but apparently not. I'm also not sure which temperature is the right temperature for Fray Dodo, so I'm going to be right back, I'm going to have a look at the wiki while this egg simply stays here and apparently, fur apparently um, incubates itself rather, so yeah, be right back. So, after consulting the wiki, apparently the dodo eggs are not allowed to go underneath 21 degrees Celsius. They may also not go above 30 degrees Celsius, making them one of the warmer eggs, surprisingly. So, currently it's 24 degrees, so obviously we're nice and in the middle of that. It is currently 2pm in game, so of course this is probably one of the warmer sections of the day. I'm not quite sure then how you're supposed to tell though if it really is 30 degrees. So to test this, let's go ahead and turn on this campfire and see if this will affect my temperature in any way. Because if that's the case, it'll actually be quite easy to figure out the temperature because, well, simply we can have a look at our own stats and if our own stats are wildly off, then we simply change where they are, where the egg is rather. So wood in there, light fire. Still only 24. The hyperthermal insulation. Oh! Fires only change the insulation. Well, that I did not know. Apparently, the insulation doesn't actually affect our temperature. Well, that's really bizarre. Our, our hyperthermal goes right down, of course, because it's making us more likely to overheat. However, our hyperthermal, hypothermal goes up because it's making us less likely to freeze. More likely to burn, less likely to freeze, is what I'm trying to say there. Okay, well, that's weird then, because that means we can't cause the egg to hatch using fires, because that doesn't actually change the egg's stats. Hmm. That is a little bit bizarre, actually. Uh, excuse me. Excuse you're literally no. Please move. Please move. Thank you. There we go. How's how is the egg doing? The egg's doing just fine. Well, after another five minutes and some checking on some forums, it turns out it's actually remarkably easy to tell if the egg is too warm or too cold. As you can see, above the egg incubation bar, you can see the simple phrase incubating. If the egg were to get too cold, let's say if I turn off one of the fires, it will simply state too cold, and then you can add fire to warm it up. The exact science is a little bit in the air at the moment, but essentially hypothermal insulation is converted into heat, whereas hyperthermal insulation is converted into cold. So just think about it, if it would warm you up, it would warm the egg up. If it, would, if it were to cool you down, it would cool the egg down as well. And, and in that way, air conditioning units are a little bit weird because they essentially give insulation to both. It does, however, seem like the two insulations don't actually cancel each other out, which means air conditioning might be the ultimate unit, because not only does it give hyperthermal, it also gives hypothermal, so you get both, which is absolutely fantastic. Well, right now the egg seems very happy with the three fires. The air temperature is 12 degrees, so these three fires must be the equivalent at minimum of 9 degrees Celsius. So, we'll be right back, hopefully when the egg hatches or something else crops up. 
So, sadly, the next day is a heat wave, so right now we desperately need to get this egg cooled off. And the only way I can think of doing that is the air conditioning unit, which I think I may actually have enough resources to make straight away. And if not, fairly soon. So, structures, we have electrical, no, not electrical, is it in electric then? Electric, we have air con- oh, we need one polymer, really? There was something waiting for us, so we need some cementing paste, which I should have down here if I'm lucky. Let's ignore the lag spike, which always occurs at the moment. I'm hoping that gets fixed soon. No- oh, I know! I know where there'll be cementing paste, which requires minimal effort at best. I believe that my wonderful frog currently actually has cementing paste in its inventory because it has been killing a few insects. Now, I'm hoping that the health of the egg isn't dropping. Nope, it's not dropping whilst in my inventory. So at worst, we just drop it when the temperature's good, but instead we can of course just do this. Yoink. <laughs> of course I could have just got off and actually checked the inventory, but instead let's make, the, make a bit of a ride out of this. And we drop the frog, and we land once again on pretzel. There we are. Now, princess, you should have cementing paste, yes? Yes! And I actually need to give you some more meat as well, whoops. Dex can go back in his house. There we go. Can I climb this? Thank you. Now, I don't know how effective the air conditioning actually is, so I'm hoping it's good. But I really have no idea. So cementing paste goes in, we make a single polymer, and then we have the glorious air conditioner unit. And that used up most of everything actually. We are a little bit low on crystals. We do have crystals elsewhere, but that's it for this house. So let's put it over here because I know for a fact there's some electric cables just underneath. There we go, it's currently powered which means there should be Whoa! A huge amount of um, resistance. That's fantastic. Okay, so we just drop the egg then. Let's make sure not to actually use it by mistake. There we go. How are you doing now, egg? You're incubating! Haha! <laughs> well done, air conditioning. Let's see if this is actually powerful enough to keep it warm during the night as well, as this is giving both levels of resistance. Hmm, I was hoping perhaps maybe there'd be some options to make it warmer or colder, but apparently not. Come on, Egg! You can do it! We all believe in you! Sadly, as was expected, during the night the air conditioning is not quite enough for the dodo egg, so we're using the torch as well. I'm hoping that we don't need to move away. It's currently 8 degrees air temperature and the torch is, I think it's half as powerful as a campfire. So it's definitely making the whole ordeal a lot easier, so having an air conditioned room is definitely what we're going to need to do if we're going to start producing loads of dodos, because I kind of want to do that because massive dodo legion and stuff. Another option would be, of course, to simply move where the farm is. Different parts of the map are different temperatures during the day and during the night. Some are warmer, some are colder. I'm not sure where the warmest area of the map is, because I've never looked into it, but I'm sure there's probably somewhere warmer than this island, although this island is pretty warm as well. So I think it would be easier just to keep it on the island and make sure that the room is lit and just do multiple eggs in a batch rather than trying to do one at a time as you can actually keep the fertilized eggs in a freezer sorry in a fridge or the smoking cupboard the preserving cupboard rather and they will actually keep for longer without causing any damage to the egg which is quite weird honestly but if the game wants that to work then they can make that work so we could have several fertilized eggs all in the preserving cupboard and then once we've got 10 or 20 let's say we can throw them all down together and then keep them all incubated thus resulting in a whole clutch of eggs so the egg did hatch, however the baby did not survive. One thing you must remember when you are breeding your animals is to lower the dino character food 
drained to a regular amount. As soon as the egg hatched, it simply starved. It was an instant process, although of course I couldn't access its inventory in time to actually feed it, this wouldn't be an issue if you were to hatch the egg near a food trough, of course, so even with the increased food drain it would have survived then. But in my case, I couldn't react, it hatched, and the second it hatched, it died. I didn't even have, have a chance to claim it as my own. So I, I have, of course, lowered the food drain now. I'm going to rehatch another egg, and we'll be right back then. Just to ensure this time nothing goes horribly wrong, I have installed a feeding trough next to the aircon, so even if the egg hatches when I'm not here, it will be able to be fed and everything will go well. In the future, I will be building an incubation room, which of course will have aircon, campfires, and a feeding trough nearby, so we can hatch multitudes of eggs at once. But right now, I just want a singular egg to hatch first, so we have a firstborn of the Lathrixian um, breeding project, I suppose. So, yeah, let's just skip ahead until this one hatches. I want to see the cute dodo! Well, I've got a little bit bored, so we're around about a third of the way through the incubation period, and I'm going to start work on building our little nursery for the little tyke. So, most likely, what I'm going to do is actually have the incubation room and nursery, which is just going to be the room for the newborns, around about here. This way I won't have to build a whole new power generator and power cables, and I can simply move everything over here once I build a new aircon. So let's go ahead and do just that. I think what we're going to do is have a stone foundation and then a 4x4, four four, no, a 2x2 two two room for the eggs themselves and then a 4x4 four four pen for the newborns afterwards. And of course this is only really going to work for dodos because let's face it, even the babies of some of the other animals is going to be quite big. So let's get on with it. Let's get some stone, let's get some wood, thatch and fiber. So, what I've decided to do is connect the incubation room, which will be this room here, to the main building. The reason for this is if I'm ever inside the main building, crafting away, or doing whatever I'm doing to pass the time whilst the eggs are busy incubating, I can very easily run downstairs, run in here, and light campfires or whatever I actually choose to be a heat supply if it gets too cold during the night. The reason for this, of course, is that the air conditioning can't quite handle the very coldest parts of the night, and the air conditioning units don't stack in power if you have multiple in the same area. Which is actually quite a shame, because it would be nice if that was the case. So we're going to need a couple more door frames, um, similar to this, I want it to be completely segmented where the eggs are actually going to be. I'm very tempted to actually have door frames here and here, so all the eggs are thrown into this corner, with the air conditioning perhaps being here. I believe the air conditioning range is two tiles, I'm not sure if it counts the tile it's on, but either way it will be in range. Yeah, okay, I do like that. So this is the room where the eggs will actually be placed. I'll have probably either standing torches or two campfires. I am tempted to perhaps have both. I could have one campfire here in this corner and then two or three standing torches. The standing torches provide the same amount of insulation as the campfires do, surprisingly. And they're much, much smaller and cheaper to produce, so that's what I'll probably go with there. In fact, we can put some of these down now, and I'll have a quick check after this just to make sure they actually do produce the same amount of insulation. Ah, I was hoping they could go closer to the corner, but apparently they can't. So, never mind. Apparently campfires and everything it will be. That's a shame, though. Well, to be perfectly honest, though, it's not like the eggs are going to go and take up too much space, so we could actually have four of these in this little square. There we are, and then have the eggs placed in the middle. And there we are, okay, and that will be the room where the eggs are actually kept, and then the air conditioning will go either here or here. Excellent, that doesn't actually look too bad at all. Of course, now we need the ceiling for it to prevent the rain from getting in, but overall pretty darn good. 
There we go, we have our first baby dodo, and amazingly, it's level 30. So as soon as it hatched, all you have to do is press E on it and it will imprint onto you, basically making it tame. So can you follow? You can indeed follow me. Come on, that's it. Walk a little bit further and stop. Excellent. Aren't you the cutest little thing? Look at you. Oh, that is absolutely adorable. That is the cutest thing. It's just a regular dodo, but absolutely tiny, and I am absolutely fine with that. So, by the looks of it, we have a maturation progress, so um, it will slowly mature, and then eventually become a regular dodo. It's currently feeding, which is fantastic, and for some reason, though, it keeps on capping itself out at 12 health, and then going back down. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, to be perfectly honest, and I'm very glad that we have food in here, but it seems to be eating food at a ridiculous rate. So what I'm going to do is very quickly pause the game, well, very quickly um, get out of the game, and turn down the feeding progress, because I'm not quite sure what's going on here. The feeding speed, rather. So, after looking up on some forums, I can confirm this is a bug that is pretty much affecting everyone. Rather than the health being at the natural baby maximum, which should be at around about between 10 and 13, it's still up at 72, and this is a big problem. Because as soon as the health actually hits where the maximum should be, it bugs out and resets. The same is happening on the food. Rather than the food going up to to 100 at maximum, it still has the maximum of over 1,000. So as soon as the food hits the limit, it then bugs out, freaks out, and goes back down again. The result is food is being eaten really, really quickly, far too quickly than it is actually feasible. Apparently the Dilo babies are actually the worst, eating over one meat per second. And of course, meat is significantly harder to get than berries. So what I'm going to have to do, honestly, is simply cheat in the berries until the baby is... Where's the baby go? The baby walked away a little bit. Can you wander? Until the baby is actually finished um, maturing, I will actually have to cheat in berries because it is almost impossible to actually keep this up. Plus, of course, like I say, this is a bug. This shouldn't be the case. And really, it's not fair that I'm going to have to take hours upon hours of my own time getting food over and over again. So I'm simply going to cheat in several hundred berries Probably one of the weakest cheats ever concocted, simply spawning in one of the easiest to, to gather items in the game, and this way I won't have to worry about the poor thing running out of food, because, well, currently it's eating about, uh, around about a hundred times the amount of an idle adult dodo. So, anyway, I am still really pleased with this. It is unfortunate that this bug is currently in the works. This is around about eight hours since the patches went live, and I'm sure hot fixes will come very, very soon. Soon. Regardless though, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Ark Survival Evolved is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And feel free to leave some name suggestions for our little baby female dodo. Thank you so much again for watching, and goodbye.